something else about Fig Jam. Maybe you've never used it before. Um, and then just to jump right into it, I want to introduce myself uh, and my co-leader, Zosha. Um, so I'm Rioni Tonic, um, currently working at a risk management um, tech firm called Complex, and I'm the senior uh, product designer there. Um, I'm also a husband and a father of a three-year-old son. Uh, I love PC gaming and electric vehicles. Um, and I've been using Figma since 2015, um, right before they launched into production. Um, yeah, and then Zosha, you wanna? Yeah, um, so I'm Zosha and I um, am a researcher and design strategist and I work, um, Zosha Design Z Design and just, I um, freelance and I started out actually as a behaviorist in neuropsychology and found out about UX and I'm loving it ever since and happy to be community advocate for Figma DC. So, um, and I guess we'll move on because yeah. I'm not that excited now. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, but what, uh, we do have a Figma code of conduct just, I think everybody's gonna be nice and everything. So that's just, um, when you're here, just be respectful and everything, figure that it would be part of the code of conduct and you can review it. Um, we put it in the, uh, yeah, in the chat. And um, yeah, I think that we'll be fine with that, so. Yeah, and it should have asked you if you registered through Bevy just to go through that anyways. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, just to let everyone know, there is an actual Q&A feature and meet. So instead of writing it in the chat in case people are chatting, which you're welcome to, we don't want those questions to get lost. Um, so if you click the activities icon in the bottom right, you'll see a Q&A and then you can go ahead and post those. And the cool thing you'll notice is as people are posting, you can actually vote uh, on certain questions. So let's say there's 10 questions and we're you know maybe running out of time, go ahead and vote on some that you might want to get a better chance to um, get some feedback on. So with that, um, Billy, you want to take over sharing? Yeah, let me share my screen here. All right. All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Billy Sweetman. Uh, I work at a design agency called Headway in, uh, with our headquarters in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm the head of design here. We have a pretty big remote team. Our team's kind of all over the United States. We really focus on bringing entrepreneurial ideas to reality, uh, helping uh, with design development and product strategy. Uh, I'm married, dad of, Two girls, uh, designer, love design, uh, live and breathe it. And uh, my background and my uh, previous career was a game developer. So I still do a little bit of uh, game development on the side. Uh, but today we're here to talk about uh, Fig Jam. And I'm very excited to kind of go over just the way we use Fig Jam and how we've taken it, taken a lot of the things we've done in other tools and kind of folded them into Fig Jam and kind of go through some of the capabilities and, and things that you can do. And then I've got one fun thing at the end uh, that you can do in Fig Jam as well, which isn't work related. A lot of it's design and work related, um, but you can use it for a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of the work that we do in Fig Jam right now is um, things that we used, used to, to do in all these all other tools. Oh, we get some feedback. Oh, there we go. Uh, we used to do in all these other tools. So we used to use Miro a lot for a lot of different things. We used to use Sketch for things way back before we switched to Figma. We used to use Whimsical for a lot of diagramming and app mapping and exercises that we'd run on our design team. Google Drawings way back even before uh, Whimsical. And then we used to do some of that stuff in Figma. 
And the nice thing for us is we're always trying to look to reduce tools and we're trying to lower the um, cognitive load of things that we all have to remember how to do and really make it so a lot of our tools are integrated together and can work easily with the stuff we're already creating. And FigJam really allowed us to do that in a lot of different and unique ways. And we know it's still an early sort of access and beta as it's, as it's just getting launched out here, but it's kind of cool to see some of the stuff you can already do with it and um, the potential of where it's gonna go. So like I said, we replaced all of these uh, other tools to do a lot of the exercises that we would do during our design process. So one of our big things that we do with our product strategy team is we spend a lot of time doing customer user or customer interviews, user interviews, problem interviews, solution interviews. And a lot of that is really just going and using note cards, uh, little post-it notes digitally all over the place two or three people in a meeting, collecting all their thoughts and putting, thing, putting things down. Then our design team takes that information and we put together these customer goals and theme matrix. And we really use these to inform our customer journey mapping, inform our app mapping, see if there's any threads that we think are um, really important to, to go after on the design side. Um, and with that, we just use their generic note cards uh, or the sticky notes. So FigJam has a whole series of sticky notes that you can grab down here. Uh, you can also use the shapes if you want to, to enter text and things like that. You get different color options for the sticky notes. We build out templates like this for us to start off with. So that's kind of a cool thing that FigJam allows us to use is a way to create a bunch of different templates right away. So we'll have a customer goals and themes matrix, and this is built out. We might have four or five in here. We might identify certain themes. The example app we always use is an app called Squad Up. It's a way to find uh, other people who want to play soccer with you. And we might say like a theme might be it's too far, and we might start capturing different customer feelings and emotions that they wrote down during their like, I don't like to drive far. And we'll capture some of that stuff in these, in these themes and put it in there. One of the cool things that just built into the FigJam tool is uh, you got different stamps that you can pull in. So we can pull in different stamps and put those on things like, hey, you know, we really like this. We really want to go after this thread. And we can use this to do asynchronous communication. A lot of times post um, an interview, we might have a little debrief session put some notes together. And then there might be some asynchronous thought. I'll come back afterwards and add some more notes here. Maybe pull something in from their, their predefined sticker library to um, add some additional flair or detail to really call it out in there. After this exercise, another thing that we use FigJam for is going through customer journey mapping. So customer journey mapping, we'll kind of get all that information in those themes and we'll start to build out these journey maps. We've built out um, these initial title cards. These are all brought in as Figma components. You can actually bring components from your Figma files into FigJam, which is a really cool way to build some custom things that you might need, custom backgrounds for different workshops you might need to run, or just bring in your screen designs or your wireframes. So we'll go through and we'll start to, like I said, lay out these customer journey maps and we'll build them out similar like this. Some might be very complicated where we've got customer goals, stages and activities, features and data. Some might not be complicated at all and it's just the stages and activities. But the nice thing in here is we can quickly add, add different things in here, continue our customer journey map and keep building out that journey map and our entire team keyed in here, drop comments, also drop stickers, you know, if we draw comments on there, the, this is too complicated. Make it easier. Can't type tonight, but uh, you know, that way we can communicate asynchronously and you get this nice comment thread on the side. So as we're going through our customer journey map, we can bring all this stuff here and really have that central hub of information. Another cool thing when you are working through either your journey map or your uh, customer themes and matrix, you can copy and paste directly into your Figma files from here. So you can grab all of this and paste it into your Figma file. So you can have that information right there and while you're working on your designs and bringing that stuff in. 
Another exercise that we use FigJam and tools like FigJam to do is app mapping. This happens a lot after our customer journey map has been decided and we've gone through and we've developed out sort of uh, some of the key features that we think we need, some of the key data that we wanna capture. We'll go in and start to build out an app map. And we actually built out all these little components in Figma and brought them in, uh, same with these, so we could have it styled in the way that we wanted it to be styled in the way that we felt communicated the best for us. And it's kind of cool on how you can bring, like I said, all this stuff in, and we can create these different versions of these cards um, using things like auto layout and setting all that stuff up, setting up our different type styles and just bringing all that uh, into here, into FigJam. So here, this is the same soccer app we always use for an example. And we're kind of going through and we're starting to block out the different aspects of that app sort of in this app map. You know, so here we have our home screen and then I'll zoom in so we can get a little bit, I know sometimes it's hard to read on the share. Uh, we might have a welcome and login screen here might have a validation error. So we we'll might wanna drop some comments in there. And then we'll go into the onboarding note and you'll see we're identifying different things that might be issues here. The kind of cool thing with building it in here is we can then go with our development team and we can start to walk them through some of these flows. And um, we'll might record a Loom video and walk through the flow. And they might come back and drop in some sticky notes and said, uh, and say different things that they might need to know about here, like on the welcome and login screen, are we, you know, uh, let's just use Google and Apple ID. And our development team can drop these notes in here and we can have conversations asynchronously while we're going through this process. Like I said before, all of these were built in Figma and we just brought them in um, by in copy and paste them in, or you can get access to libraries just like you would normally in your Figma file. So you can build out different micro components to drop into here and really utilize a lot of the power that Figma has in FigJam. The reason we did this for this specific exercise with the app maps and the little micro apps is we want to convey some thought of what the UI might look like, but we didn't want to go as far as wireframing. And that's why we built out these little micro apps and brought these in here, but these are micro screen layouts. Another thing that we want to communicate is different steps along the process. Now you can do this, right? We can mix and match different components right from FigJam itself. So we can have a card like this that says, uh, let's say, uh, select sport. And we can mix and match right inside our your different Figma components and your FigJam components, uh, which is kind of cool. So if this flow diagram turns into a little bit more of a process diagram, and we need to have some more of those traditional uh, user flows uh, shapes, we can drop those in just by getting them from here. Another thing that's kind of cool is, you know, like I said, with the comments and stuff like that, uh, the team can just draw on here as well if they need to. So if there's a connection that's wrong and we want to redline a bunch of stuff, we're going to say, no, this is actually going to loop here instead. And we can kind of draw through that. Um, or if we're talking about these different apps in here, we might want to say, uh, might draw like, actually, this is going to be segmented in cards and we can have that conversation through. So the tool really provides a lot of different things for these exercises that we hey, would norm normally go through. Hey, Billy, can I pause you for a sec? Yeah, go ahead. So we had one question. <clears throat> Um, Takesu or Takeste, I'll save your your second question for later. But <clears throat> it was perfect timing, Billy, when you mentioned the component library. Um, Madeline was asking, and I could answer this too. Um, when you create a template, what I what and by template, I think she means component. Um, does it get service at the top of the list in the Figma template modal? Meaning, I think she means the component library window. Um, so Madeline, to answer your question, what I've experienced is if you have like in-house component libraries that you want to mix and match the way Billy is doing, <clears throat> I did notice that FigJam currently just kind of shoves it to the end mm -hmm. of those library tabs, um, unfortunately. So you would think if you enabled uh, a library that you've built mm -hmm. and it, it gets turned on for FigJam, it would be probably the first tab that you see. Um, but 
on the positive side of that, as you start using the components from that window, there's actually a recents tab. I don't know if it's currently showing there for you, Billy, if you open the component library or the window. Yes, it's not showing there. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. it is. this particular instance, Billy hasn't used any, but as you would start using them, you would see kind of like a history icon. So at least the ones that you're using frequently from maybe your custom library, they would show up on that first tab. But yeah, to answer your question, Madeline, um, it doesn't doesn't show it would show at the very end unfortunately that's super useful to know but i actually did mean template um i think in the beginning oh. billy you mentioned that you created templates for like the different uh brainstorming pieces and i mm -hmm. think there is a way to import templates i haven't used it yet that's why i have the question of like when you create one does it get surfaced at the top of that modal where you import a template so we don't what we will do is we'll create a file and we'll house that in our, we have a templates directory and we will copy that template and drag it in and then um, work in that file that we made a duplicate of. Uh, we haven't worked through the template flow yet, but that's because a lot of our other files and our current process is just creating template files and then duplicating them over. So that's kind of how we do it right now. So um, I'll have to explore that template uh, import because we have not used that yet. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Madeline. All right, we'll uh, take the other questions later. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, and like I said before, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with these different components and build this stuff out, uh, leveraging in FigJam and running these, these exercises in here. One thing that we do as well, and this is actually a, a colleague of mine, uh, Clint, who's on our design team, uh, did this with a project in Whimsical and we're translating it now into, into FigJam. So we do the uh, Crazy Eights, which is a exercise, Google Design Sprint. Everyone gets eight screens. You're supposed to do it on paper with markers. We felt it was easier to create a bunch of different little components, essentially a little UI kit that lives inside of FigJam and allow uh, our clients, our development team, whoever is part of this exercise to build out different screens and actually work through um, by copying and building out these different pieces. So they can actually build out little app UIs. All of these components are built within FigJam itself. So you can take these and just drag them in here and drop them in, you know, you know, check boxes if we want. And we can really start to do some of those bigger exercises that you traditionally do on a whiteboard. You can do them right here in, in, in FigJam. And one of the cool things is, like I said before, post-conversation, post uh, digesting what everyone had done, you can grab everything and copy and paste it into your design file. And then you just have that ready there to start working through and working through your designs. Now for here, these, like I said before, each one of these little elements is actually built inside of FigJam. So I'm not bringing in components. I'm actually building these in FigJam itself, except for I might've lied, the icons are not. So the icons actually were pulled in from a Figma library. But to create these little components, you can actually group things. Actually, I'm gonna bring this out here. And I'm gonna ungroup it. And you can see that this is actually three uh, separate pieces. We've got a text box in here, another text box above, and then just a box in the background set to gray. And that's how we kind of group all three of these together. And that's how we get that, that single component for that text box and that's kind of how the input field works that's kind of how the button works here as well you know we can change we right now we have the tone on tone if we want to change it to white change the different colors for all of these things so it's kind of a, a cool way to do a exercise as a team that you would do normally just drawing real quickly asynchronously or everyone in the multiplayer experience building out the crazy eights and putting those screens together also going through exercises like this, then we can also do uh, like dot voting. Figma actually provides a bunch of things in here, you know, like this, this flowery one is, is pretty cool. So we can drop that in there and say, this is my dot vote for this one. We can put those in there as well. So we can also do the dot voting exercise that you might do right after this in FigJam. These, uh, Phone backgrounds as well. So this is another thing, a component that we brought in. We just needed generic phone backgrounds. So we built that in Figma and dropped it in here. You could do that for a, you know, uh, a web browser or anything else like that. 
um, to do this for all the different uh, exercises you might want to do. The other thing that you could do is a progress tracker or uh, showing different ways, different screens interact and work. This might be something that you would do inside of Figma, inside your design files. There's a bunch of little components you can get that show like tap movements or uh, slide movements or swipes or pinch and zoom. You could bring those in here. This is just a quick mock-up of screens that were brought in. So if these were, if there was a library hooked up, it's not because these are in my from my work account and this is my personal account, but if this was a library hooked up as the screens update, just like in your Figma file, you would update in your FigJam file, and then these would update with the latest designs, the latest uh, look on the screens, the latest UX, and you can see all of that right here. In here, then, you can also communicate status of where these screens might be, so we can say that this is design, it's now in development, design is done on this screen here, and we can also, like I said, communicate different interactions and how those lead to those different screens. One of the cool things, too, is you can actually drop links just like you normally could. So here we're just linking to Google, but if we had documentation about this screen or if we want to link back to the Figma file, we could do that as well here. This is really helpful, especially when taking your app map that we kind of built out before and transitioning it once screens become a higher fidelity, start pulling some of those things in here, and we can start to get an idea of what is done, what's not done, where the status of of an app is. We've had a client in the past ask us to do this for their entire product. So it was over 50 some screens that we had to put out, show where they all are, link them together for the designs, the status of them all. And we had to do that in Whimsical. And it was actually very, very painful to do in Whimsical. But here you can build out some nice components. You could build out status cards here on the side as a component, bring that in and really have a nice clean way to show all that stuff. And then it's gonna update from all your latest design files and you don't have to actually worry about waiting for a new screenshot to get pasted in. It's just gonna let you know if, as long as someone publishes that. Another fun thing that you can do and sort of the non-work related to is you can also play games in here. So. Uh, you know, you can play games like Dungeons and Dragons. It's got a grid in here. There was a conversation on Twitter a day ago about uh, what are things that you've used Figma for. So this is all built in Figma, uh, you know, and these are components. So you can adjust all the values and type in them and do all kinds of stuff um, in Figma if you really wanted to. Uh, you can invite your friends and play in here. So FigJam is like really versatile tool. It allows you to do a lot of really cool things. And there's a lot of different exercises you can do and just fun stuff that you can do in here as well. Uh, we've walked clients through doing really rudimentary wireframe design with just blocks and kind of walked them through and was able to do stuff. You can see someone else moving their character around. Uh, so there's just a lot of cool things that you can do in FigJam. Um, and they really provide a, a great tool set for allowing all of your work to live inside of Figma and not being uh, needed to be housed or, or, or uh, somewhere else, uh, like a Miro or a Whimsical. Yeah, I've seen um, <clears throat> a while back, uh, Raji from the Figma community and some other folks, they were also using Figma for Dungeons and Dragons when uh, COVID happened. And people were getting really creative with it, like using masking for the fog of war as you, mm -hmm. you know, as you proceed through the maps and um yeah but i think fig fig jam is probably even a better way to do that because it's it's such a lightweight tool compared to the full editor um and it just yeah with multiple people there and maybe for people who aren't as familiar with design tools yeah, it, it makes perfect sense to use it for something like that mm -hmm. Well, cool. we're gonna, yeah, we're going to open it up uh, to questions now. We're going to go to the question chat. But um, before, so we don't jump on that later, but um, here are ways to keep in touch with us. Um, we have Twitter, our Bevy group website, Slack, and our Gmail. But if you um, contact us, let's say, I, yeah, to our Gmail, um, or however you contact us, uh, we can, uh, you wanna join our team, you can have access to this file, um, this presentation. Yes, we will We will publish the presentation. Uh, and it's also being recorded. Um, someone asked that earlier, but in case- Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
yeah so yeah. we'll we'll send a message out um and we have a youtube channel just because it's easily accessible for everyone um but yeah, thanks, Billy. Uh, this is really awesome. And some of these exercises I haven't done. Uh, and I have questions myself, but yeah, let's let's go through some of these. Um, so I'm just going to sort by um, which whatever has the most votes right now. So Madeline asked one, and I actually asked something similar. Um, and I can kind of ask her side of it. Um, but, but I asked, um, do you invite cross-functional teams in the early stages of when you're kind of exploring some of these exercises in Fig Jam. Uh, and Madeline had a spin off of that. And she asked that, how much have you worked in Fig Jam with viewers? And I kind of take that as maybe non-designers who aren't editing in here. And you know, how useful has that experience been uh, to collaborate or if you've found any frustrations or anything like that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm a big fan of let people in right away. So our whole process in, in everything we do is um, clients, the developers, the product strategist, the all across functional team, everyone has access to everything from day one. So we are letting everyone look at where we are in the design process, where we are in doing different exercises, where we actually encourage a lot of like leave comments. Um, we want you to be involved in the mood boarding process with us. I find that the sooner we can have those conversations with the stakeholders and the team, the better the understanding of what we're gonna build at the end is going to be. And we can really resolve a lot of things that might come up later early on. One of the, uh, one of the greatest stories, and it's, it's not really my story, but uh, our designer Clint, who did the Crate z 8s exercise, bringing the development team in to do that with the stakeholders, really built a bond on that specific client team um, and really helped create this shared vision instead of being sort of a waterfall, design it, and then go develop it. Um, so we really like to encourage bringing people on as early as possible. Even so, like, you know, if I just need to work through an idea, we might jump into Fig Jam, just block something out really crudely and say, this is the structure I'm thinking of uh, just to get just to get an idea and help us build that that common language. Yeah, um, when Fig Jam launched, and I saw an opportunity to start using it with um, some product owners or even engineers during one of our regular ceremonies. You know, everyone's kind of used, or most people have used some kind of like virtual whiteboarding tool, whether it be Lucid Charts, uh, Google Jamboard. Um, which I find funny that Fig Jam used the word Fig Jam and Google's is Jamboard um, and Miro and, and some others. And it didn't really take them that long. You know, they, they had a, a few initial questions just when they were getting used to the UI and they're trying to figure something out and getting frustrated. But then, you know, 30 minutes in, the questions kind of stopped. And even just for a basic level of, of usage, it was enough for them at the time just to collaborate in a virtual white space. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really helpful. And of course, um, it's easy to access because once people are using Fig Figma, they understand, you know, they know how to log in and access those projects and they don't have to go and hunt for a link that was shared in Slack or in an email or something like that. They can just go to the, the space that they're in, whether it's the team and, and, and just find that file again. Yeah, and it's nice that it's an uh, interface because the people are kind of used to um, the Figma non-designers not as used to, and uh, this interface is much easier to communicate with people who might not be a designer. Because so mm -hmm. I always have that kind of open, tried to keep things open and share, and then sometimes people would have trouble communicating through Figma, so it's a great tool. Yeah, I think they, they did a great job with onboarding and keeping it minimal, which, you know, you, you come into other tools and the toolbars and the main features kind of surround the entire window sometimes. And it, it's, it's less intimidating. I can mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. Um, Madeline. Oh, you're muted. Oh, Madeline, did, did we help answer your question? 
Yes, thank you. Cool. Um, all right, let's go down the list. Oh yeah, Anna asked a little while back, um, how might you approach versioning of design ideas so as the app mapping evolves and you wanna go back to revisit how it looked earlier? How would you have a way to do that? Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, let you answer, but I'll quickly say that it might not be obvious and I didn't think about it at first, just simply because of what FigJam is, but there is actually a version history for FigJam files and it's located in mm -hmm. the same place on, on the dropdown for the file name. Um, but I'll let you fill in, Billy. Yeah, same thing. If I wanted to add a version history to, let's say we got really far, I'd give it a title, description, put my initials in here, sort of what we are marking in time and we would do it that way. If I wanted to see multiple versions next to each other, we might duplicate one of these, move it down, edit it there. If we really felt adamant about keeping one for, you know, for archival reasons, we would duplicate that entire file. It's kind of the same philosophy we have in our Figma files as like, you know, version history for big important milestones so we can go back to it if we need to. If we really need to keep it off to the side and don't change it, we'll duplicate that entire file. So, yeah, I uh, because of COVID and we've been strictly relying on being remote, we've tried to make a lot better use of version history. I think, at least in my experience and others that I've worked with, we just kind of let it run, you know, do the auto saves. And I think the majority of the time I was using version history until I was making better use of it was just when I was publishing libraries, right? And you name it, give a description, mm -hmm. say what's changed in those components. Um, but now I'm trying to be, take care, Morgan. Um, I'm trying to be a lot more collaborative with like my engineers and maybe my PMs who need to understand the differences that are happening. And maybe there's multiple features being worked on at the same time that happen to be in the same file or there's multiple workflows. So we'll, you know, give major versions, like you said, a meaningful description. Um, maybe sometimes my version title is the name of a JIRA ticket, for example, we use JIRA mm -hmm. work, so they can kind of track it from that way. And um, yeah. All right, Anna marked her question is answered, good. Um, yeah, do you have anything else, Billy, you're good? Nope, I'm good. Um, so Zosha asked something, can you link to a page within a Figma file or just to the Figma file? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can. So whatever you put in the link. Um, so if I wanted to link to a specific screen or a specific frame, when you go to get your link, and I don't know if it'll show up in here, uh, on your normal Figma, you'll have a share to specific frame. So if you tick that, it'll give you the URL with the frame in it, and you can drop that in the link here, and then it'll link directly to that frame. So that way you can link directly to a specific frame in, in, any, in any file you have access to. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, and one thing to note about that is um, it stops at the root frame level. So you might have um, like, let's say, Billy's process tracker group of objects uh, was a frame, but you wanted to point directly to the selected screen that he has, the squad up one. Um, it won't go that deep. Mm -hmm. It'll just open the file and then it'll point to that root level frame. So if you need to do that, you might need to like, I don't know, make a little trick with like a transparent box and put it over the frame or just point to the frame and annotate it and make sure people know what you're trying to point to exactly. Um, yeah, but just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, oh, the Keste, I hope I'm saying that right. So he asked a while back, are there any uh, Miro, mural whimsical features that you missed compared to Fig Jam that, that you wish maybe Fig Jam had? I think some of the, the ability to hide and reveal cards, just some of those additional advanced features. I think some of that stuff, but 
most of the time, I wouldn't say I was like a Miro or a whimsical super user by any means. It definitely was got in there to do what I needed to do. And Fig GM covers 90% of what I need. But I have heard uh, a couple of the product product strategists on our team wish they had the, um, the ability for the hidden toggles for the cards and stuff like that. But other than that, I I personally don't. It covers covers all my bases. So yeah, the only thing I can think of, and at my company we use Lucid Chart. Um, I mean, Figma did strip away the ability for layers, and just me like. I'm already a designer. I, I understand how layers work, but I think for um, maybe a non-designer that doesn't typically um, work in layers, I think it's actually really smart that they left that out because it's just less to think about, less on mm -hmm. the screen. It keeps it focused purely on just laying the content out. And you know, you can still right-click on things and send things to the back or to the front and lock things in group and ungroup. And I think that's enough just kind of taking that action and getting it to the order that you want and then just leave it and forget it. Um, and the other thing I would say, and I'm, I didn't use Miro enough to use it, but um, a lot of the other tools have integrations for project management tools. Like for us, we're an, an Atlas in house. So we use Jira and Confluence. Um, I haven't actually checked to see if you can embed big jam files into Jira Confluence, but Miro and uh, uh, Lucid Charts, they did have like official plugins or integrations for Figma. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, actually, I should check that out tomorrow and see if they have that. But that's the only other thing I can personally think of. All right. And then, oh, to guess they also asked, maybe you can clarify we remember what you're talking about, but he asked, do you manually count the votes or is there a better workflow? You're talking about like for the stickers? Yeah. The dot oh, okay. Yeah. We'd probably, we'd manually count them if we were doing dot voting. Uh, normally there's not enough people. Uh, if it was like 40 people, that might be pretty cumbersome to count all those, but normally it's like yeah. eight or nine. So yeah. There's, um, there's a really great resource. I'll sh find it and I'll share it in the chat on the community um, that someone published. It's a sticky notes library, and it actually has a voting feature built into the components. Um, so it has a variant property, and you can vote oh. up to like, it might have like 10, maybe less than 10, and it's super helpful. Um, so sometimes I've been using that if we want to vote, because as Billy touched on, you can import pretty much any library that's compatible with Figma. And then you just enable it for FigJam and you can drop it in there and you mix and match. Um, so I've used that if I wanted to do voting, but yeah, if you're gonna go more than like 10, you might wanna use another tool or something just to keep track of that. Yeah. yeah. And, and one thing I hope they do add is the ability to adjust variants inside of FigJam from your components. Because you'll notice the way I've got these, my app map cards set up is these are independent of each other because uh, I couldn't, at least when I first built this, I was not allowed to change the variant of the little app when it was connected to the card. So, Yeah, I experienced that as well. And I feel like, I don't know if it's a bug, but I feel like sometimes it shows and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't know if what you've experienced, but I feel like the libraries that come with Big Jam, which obviously were made by someone else, but it's kind of baked in to the components library. Those variants work if they have variants, but sometimes my own personal stuff, I feel like works sometimes and it doesn't. But again, Fig Jam is still considered in beta. So if uh, mm -hmm. you are experiencing issues, there is a feedback um, option, I think either in the help menu or the little star icon on the top right and it'll point you to the Figma um, community forums, which is really nice space if you don't want that real-time chat with Slack. Um, the forums are a really nice place for that, and you can report bugs and put out feature requests and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I did just put the link to the, they call it whiteboards and stickies. It's a library um, that I just mentioned that has the voting built in. Um, yeah. 
थैंक यू Madeline asks about working in Fig Jam with viewers rather than editors. How, uh, if you've done that, and how useful it is as a collaborative experience? Yeah, viewers. Yeah, I believe viewers can still leave comments. So we've done. If I'm leading an exercise with a client and they might not want to go in and edit anything, we'll. still have them in with us as a viewer and kind of following along just follow the cursor instead of doing a screen share and then we'll afterwards maybe leverage the comment system we have a little walk through we walk clients with on how to do the commenting in Figma so that asynchronously they can drop feedback and notes um for different different things that we're working on so yeah a lot of our a lot of our clients are our viewers in our Figma file I and mean, it feels like we have like 400 people uh, sometimes when you see all the viewers in there but um yeah most of our clients use viewers and we we show them how to how to leave comments and stuff like that so yeah and if you aren't aware but as a reminder um fig jam is going to be a paid for add on um at the end of this year supposedly if nothing changes um so i highly recommend just test it out and play with it um if you don't want to pay extra for it i think it's still pretty cheap it might be like four dollars or something i don't know if you remember billy um but it's i think it's around half of what the normal subscription is for the mm -hmm. the typical editor um so yeah test it out collaborate with other people that might not be on the design team and what i'm hoping for at my company is that people are enjoying it enough because it's you know it's already together with the other design uh files that people like it enough so that we can just kind of agree that it's going to be the main kind of virtual whiteboarding tool um and hopefully save the cost and not be scattered across two other whiteboarding tools um i think that's it for the questions uh well, there pissed. was um sorry um to guess say uh had one going back to uh templates that i'm not sure but how um you want to know how you manage your templates i guess i like yeah so internally we have a we have a directory that we just call uh shipwright it's the name of our ui kit but it's also where all of our templates live and we'll have different fig jam templates in there and we have our management system in there and we'll have different like starter templates for different design files different things we're doing so everything kind of lives in there our we have a figma documentation file that also lives in in there that gets shared into all our other files to say like how to do different things but yeah everything lives in a in a template directory and everything is sort of named accordingly um and everyone everyone knows to go in there and just copy copy what they need So when we start off a new project, it's a little bit of copy and pasting a bunch of stuff at the get go, and then changing a bunch of covers so it it matches for for the project we're kicking off. And we just thought that was the best way to do it because it's all in one area instead of trying to do anything else. But you know, always learning and always improving. So yeah, we do something similar where um, we do it for our UI. uh design patterns so we have a patterns file which is in the same it's in the design system project um and we basically break down each page into different types of patterns so we have something like adding a new item which typically maybe you might see you know call the action button on the top and then the content down below where we have patterns for data tables um things like communication like different types of notifications um alerts things like that and the screens are con consisted of um they're they're all components coming from the main component library and it, if you're familiar with using components and in instances in figma obviously if you're bringing in an entire screen that's been published as a component um to be used as a template you wouldn't be able to just use that screen as is right you got to 
probably detach it, start adding content and filling it in for the use case that you need. But the nice thing is even though you're detaching that particular screen, it's still a starting template. And then the things within it are all still pointing to the main component library. Um, so just because you're detaching it doesn't mean it's still connected, but it's a nice starting point for someone who might be starting a new feature or, or a new file and they just don't have to start from scratch from typicals, you know, layouts, things that we just constantly reuse. Um, so yeah, we use that as well as uh, a documentation page that have, might have more things written out in text like in Confluence. Um, but yeah, that's like our, our one source that we use for any patterns that we've identified as a pattern. Um, and we, we meet bi-weekly uh, to address anything new or anything that needs to be updated just so we, you know, we're keeping that file up to date as much as possible. Um, well, we got, oh, another question. I was going to say we got nine minutes. Someone got one in. Madeline asks, since you can paste FigJam stuff into Figma, you make a template live library for FigJam items in Figma. Do you want to answer that? Too. <laughs> yeah, so let me re make a template library in Figma for FigJam. Is that was that the question? I believe. Yeah. So. so like your customer goals and themes matrix, like you could could you just paste that in FigJam, make that a component, and then open that library in FigJam and then just make that kind of your FigJam template library? So for so pulling components in from, from Figma, you can only do certain things with them. And so I'll, I'll show you some of the limitations real quick. So these are components that we brought in from, from Figma. Uh, you can't, you can only scale them. Uh, you can't like just single directionally scale them. Uh, and you'll see I somehow broke the font there. Uh, and so there are certain things that it's like, yeah, that works great to bring it in from Figma as a Figma component. So like this, like these pieces here, and actually all these pieces here live in a single library file in Figma that's just called uh, customer journeys and app mapping. But like this goals, themes, and matrix, these little note cards and stuff like that, we would set this up in FigJam because we would want to leverage the capabilities of the note cards, who wrote it down, the color changing, bold, all of that stuff. You can rename stuff or like you can do some edits. Like these screens are brought in from Figma and I could change this to say soccer. But I can't go in here and like switch out a variant or at least I can't, I couldn't before. So there are certain limitations to bringing your component in. And then, like I said, you can only scale it in one direction if you're trying to create something that's a little bit more dynamic. And that's why like these here, these were all built in FigJam instead of building these in FigJam or in Figma. Uh, because if for some reason we were building a web app and I wanted my input field to be longer, I wanted to be able to scale it and stretch it instead of that sort of all direction scale that I would get if um, those were Figma pieces. However, like these in here as individual components with screen title, this could all be one frame in the background as a template. And then this stuff can just live on top of it. I could lock it down that way. People could still click in and rename things. So there's like, you have to kind of make some of those tactical decisions as you're building out different pieces and where that stuff lives. I don't know, as we build out more exercises, we might just have an exercise, a FigJam exercise library file where we're pulling in all these pieces and then the actual templates for the exercises will probably still live in FigJam. At least that's the way we're thinking about it right now. Three months from now, it could change based on what they update and what they give us access to. So I hope that helps. Got it, thanks, yep. Yeah, I believe that the main, the only two things you can do is simple text editing and scaling, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of the feedback of users or and the community. People are 
some people are wanting more of a not not a fine line, but more of a, a stronger connection between the editor and Fig Jam. But again, you know, I'm sure it's a challenge for them to decide how far they want to go with that, because right now it's very minimal and kind of free flowing and an open canvas. But um, yeah, and who knows? Maybe Fig Jam will have plugins eventually too. Uh, that could open up some interesting things. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we got five minutes until eight. Um, any last minute questions? Did you want to fill in anything, Zosha? Uh, no. I just want to thank our speaker again, Billy, uh, for yeah. doing such a thorough and fun job of all different kinds of uses. And um, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, this was super fun. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter as well. I try to be as responsive as possible. Yep. And we'll we'll publish this in our uh, Friends of Figma DC team um, in our community profile. Um, and then you can get that there. Uh, this is being recorded, so we'll upload that to YouTube um, once we get that uploaded and then yeah i will uh, ask one question is just uh some people were able to join at different points so if you dm me um or uh later on and let me know if because we're still working out what time this works out best for people to attend so um if this wasn't the perfect time just let us know and we will um work on it okay and um, on my community profile and the Headway community profile, you can get access to the, we don't have the crazy eights up yet, but we do have the app map, customer journey mapping and customer goals and theme matrix in a single fig jam file uh, that's shareable as well. That doesn't have all my scribbles all over it. No, oh, but we love your scribbles. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, guys. All good right. Night. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. See ya. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.